Only two weeks ago, a major conference was organized by the Muslim Council of Britain uh, entitled Islamic Finance and Trade Cooperation, Islamic Finance and Trade. And, um, and I see many of our friends here uh, attended. And of course, uh, our chief guest, writer of the Stephen Teams, was there as one of the keynote speakers. And it was explored, the whole subject was exposed in depth, that surely it needs to be looked into it. What was more comforting and um, uh, welcoming was the messages that we received from both the Prime Minister and the leader of the opposition, um, David Cameron, and the leader of the Liberal Democrats, all giving their full support to explore, to look at the alternatives mode of finance and banking in the UK. We are seeing the issues in around the world, major crisis that we are looking at it, but as the famous quote comes from John Dunn, who summed up the crisis, saying that never seem to know for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. And this is something that we all need to be aware of. Respected guests, there have been much said on the subject matter. I just want to raise two key points. One is, of course, recalling a man that is being remembered when we talk about economics and the banking, and that is Adam Smith. And many, many, many decades ago, he said, greed is what keeps capitalism going, but excessive greed will be the cause of the demise of capitalism. And at that time, I think, perhaps it would have been dismissed. But today, many key scholars, anchors, economists, are seriously looking at that isn't greed gone beyond what it should have gone. The whole concept of materialism, and this is the real issue that needs to be addressed. By looking at the way Islamic finance is developing, and by doing what we have done, we have suppressed the symptoms, but not the disease. The panic may have stopped, but the nervousness remains. The main street and the back streets, both in London and in New York, still continue to hurt, and the number of people sliding below the poverty line and facing food insecurity is increasing. Of course, the government and the taxpayers try to help the banks to survive. Much money is actually fed in. Our money, our taxpayers' money. But at the end of the day, one wonders whether it filters through <laughs> down to the common person. And therefore, it is heartening and welcoming when the Prime Minister refers to the drop in the rate of interest, the base rate, that needs to be filtered through to the community, down uh, at, on the ground, so that they can also benefit from it. I think one also needs to understand that the consumer attitudes we have seen a democratization of the financing. Buy now, pay later mindset, homes are being increasingly used as a cash machine and half of that as a percentage of the disposable income has skyrocketed in the UK. And of course, we see the percentages of 165% in the UK to around 138% in the US. Figures that really startles us as to where we this street. But as optimists and as people who would like to see alternatives coming on the forefront, opportunity for people to understand, and this is indeed quite heartening to see the um, our opposition spokesman saying that perhaps they may not have many in, much, nothing in common with the government, but on this aspect of solid finance, they are prepared to look into it. And I think these sort of seminars will produce papers, documents that would help establish a bit more understanding on the subject matter. It's not still easy. The word Islamic finance itself knocks many people on the streets. But then I remember a letter that appeared in the, um, the Catholic magazine called, which is a popular magazine the, the, that comes out on the tabloid. And I remember a letter coming out from a, a devout Christian saying that if only the word Islam finance was changed to ethical finance, 
I hope you're one of those who will be able to participate. <laughs> so I think, on that note, I think one can only conclude that there's need for greater understanding of this subject matter. Yes, the crisis has perhaps been a blessing in disguise in many ways, but it's an opportunity, a challenge that we must face. And inshallah, we hope through such powerful contribution that will be coming in, a proper set of papers, documents that will be prepared, shared amongst the scholars and other people. And of course, when I see our distinguished guest, Omar Chakra, from the IDB, a great friend and a person who has played such an important role, and they are seeing the positivities of Islamic finance in different parts of the world. Let's share those experiences with us. At the end of the day, it's not where it originates from, but the purpose, the key message is who benefits. And I think, inshallah, all of us will benefit from it.